What is going on, Sack Cardfiends? Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day. Today, I'm going to talk about players I'd be buying for the World Cup, cards I'd be looking at, cards I have been looking at, and sort of just sharing with you my perspective on it. This is meant to be more of a fun video. Don't go out and run and buy all these cards because they're going to go up for the World Cup. As we'll talk about in the premise of what I'm going to get into with this video, that's not really the route we're taking, so let's go ahead and talk about it. So the general premise for this video will be Players have low risk, high reward. If something goes well their way this World Cup, they could have a good spike. If something doesn't go well, your card isn't going to go to zero, right? So that's what I'm looking for. Long term plus short term. They have short term potential and they have long term potential. So even if you don't hit, you still have a good item. All that goes to proven players, which is what we're going to be talking about. And players with a lack of hype. Most of the players that we'll talk about they're not wildly speculated on that, oh, this World Cup's going to make or break their career. All of this collectively is going to add up to what we talk about. And it's also going to be, yeah, these are going to be good players. These are going to be names you know, and that shouldn't be anything to surprise you, right? I don't want to make a video on five unknown prospects that are relatively cheap. People see it. They've never heard of these guys. They're like, okay, I'll go out and buy some. And then they do nothing at the World Cup. And then everyone just wastes their money, right? I don't want that to be what this video is about. Not that I want people to go out and buy based off what this video is, but I do understand that some people will, right? Whether or not they go out directly because of this video or they're just like, yeah, I like that player. It makes sense. I'm going to go buy something. Whatever it is, I just want it to be a decent player. And that's what we're going to talk about. So first off is going to be Neymar. This one, you know, I don't have to talk wildly about the player. You guys know Neymar and a lot of these players, but he has high reward potential with this World Cup because when you're with Brazil, you know, it's almost expected you win World Cup. So if he can get that World Cup, that's going to be a big notch for him. And Brazil's the favorite going into this. You could speculate on a guy like Vinny or some other young or maybe unproven Brazilian players. But to me, most of them are pretty expensive. Maybe you can find something in the nooks that you can kind of actually make some good return on. But Neymar, I feel like, is a good option. He's also underappreciated, I feel like. Um, in terms of the holistic soccer landscape right now. I mean, if you took Ronaldo and Messi out of the last 15 years of soccer and you said, who are the best players? Neymar is going to be at the very top of that list. So for me, it's a little overshadowed by the two goats that we have playing right now. And I feel like that's, you know, a potential opportunity. Now on the other side, for most of these players, I will present one reason why I don't think they might be worth it or one reason that you could argue, and eh, you know, might want to stay away from it. Dissect it as you may, but Brazil's history for soccer or football is pretty immense. So if you go out as someone that didn't win a World Cup, you could somewhat easily be forgotten about unless the greater landscape loves you. And I do feel like Neymar is one of those players that will probably live on social media for a while. You got to think of how rewatchable are these players. Neymar, lots of tricks and, you know, flops and just lots of reasons to keep them kind of showing up. So I feel like that could be something. Um, as far as his rookie, we have the 2009 Abril goal. Um, these are pretty low grade for the most part. You can find high rate ones are also pretty expensive, but they are his true rookie and definitely the most respected out of his rookies. There are some other ones that you could maybe argue, but eh. um, alternatives just for all the players. I'm going to put alternatives down here. There's plenty of other alternatives. You don't have to go after these. These are just what I'd assume people would be going after first. So second year cards, 2014 Prism, 2017 Chrome, and Mega Cracks inserts. Of course, you can always go for other stuff. I just don't want to go through every single thing. Then next we have Thomas Muller. This is one I think is an amazing opportunity because this is someone that just doesn't get any hype, right? So Thomas Muller, as far as reasons, he could be a good buy. You have the non-forward bias, which basically is, well, he doesn't score all the goals, so no one really cares. And I think that for, that's for good reason why he's underappreciated. If there was a, and I mean, there are midfield <laughs> prospects that rookie stickers go for about the same price as Thomas Muller rookie stickers, right? And Thomas Muller ones aren't as widely produced and are going to be more valuable long-term, you'd assume. So non-forward bias really goes under the radar. German legend, both for club and country. But the Bayern dominance I have is like a bad thing. You could say it's a good thing. I really do think it's a good thing. But that's like one of the things that people don't look at them as fondly about. Same thing with a lot of Bayern players where they're just like, ah, you know, Farmers League, they've won this many years in a row. Who cares? It's it's basically a nothing. But it's, I don't agree with that. Some people write it off. So take it for what you may. I don't know what you could really say about Thomas Muller that's downside other than maybe like social presence or something. I don't know. Um... As far as his rookie, 2009 as well. Um, this is a Panini Bayern set, so you can buy these. There's some packs out there. 
Um, but there's also a lot of different variations. There's this foil one I think's the best. There's the headshot. There's another action shot. There's like one with two pieces of him that you gotta put together. I mean, there's a lot. Um, alternatives, basically the same. Um, I also added in high-end autos. I think for all these players, that's a good thing that you could go after. Um, second year stuff, 2014 Prism, 2017 Tops Chrome. Again, most of the alternatives are gonna be the same throughout. If they're in those sets, I'm going to mention them. Then we'll stay in the same vein since we're already there. Why not? Manuel Neuer is another one that I would add. Um, again, non-forward bias. He's a goalie, so he doesn't get a ton of love. Although, from what I see, goalies typically get love, but Neuer doesn't get as much, um, probably because he's just not as late in his career. I'm imagining once you're retired or close to retired, then people can look at the holistic picture and then say, yeah, that's good. I mean, not a lot of people are prospecting in goalies either. Um, German legend, Bayern dominant, same exact thing as Thomas Muller. Um, personally, I believe in those two very, very much. I think the hobby underrates German legends in general. And also, I think Germany is pretty good at collecting. So they they have this thing where I feel like you can get some good items and good grade from them still, which is great. I think that that's awesome. Um, but 2007 Foosball or Champions League. So both, of, well, this one's a Champions League card. There's also a Champions League sticker. And then this one is his league release. So pick what you want there. All of them relatively cheap. Alternatives, same thing as Thomas Muller there. Also of note with the 2014 Prism for both of them, that is a World Cup winning year. So I do feel like that has a lot of importance. Next is like the most off the radar one I have, which is Antoine Griezmann. I want to go with French forwards or just something French related. So I'll talk about it here. You could go for Mbappe. You could go for Benzema. You could go for maybe a forward that hasn't busted onto the scene yet. You could go for a Conte. But in my opinion, Mbappe is one of the most highly prospected players in the market. So I don't really want to go after him. He does have a lot of upside. You cannot dispute that, but I don't want to go after him. Um, Benzema, I feel like would be a great one. I think he would be in the Lewandowski tier if he wasn't currently about to win a Ballon d'Or and didn't just come off of winning the Champions League with Real Madrid because those two things really skyrocketed his market. So I didn't want to pick him. And then Conte, he's one of those players that like the hobby loves at times, but like with all midfielders, they don't really love midfielders. And Conte, sure, he, he's had achievements. He's on that Leicester team. He's doing good at Chelsea, but realistically long term i don't know how many people look back at this era and just you know passionately think of conte sure smiley friendly guy but like a lot of these players they do have a chance to win two world cups and antoine griezmann also has the chance to be a french top scorer so basically at this point he's on that path and very close to becoming france's all-time leading goal scorer could win back-to-back -back world cups he was a vital part of that 2018 squad a lot of people like to write it up to mbappe it was not just mbappe um, but his club career is very lackluster unless you're a big atleti fan you're not going to care his rookie 2009 muddy chromo also in some different sets he's not in 2014 prism so you got to go with 2018 at least that's what i would go for at world cup winning year that's going to be important because of mbappe rookies as well you would think um, early select, high-end autos, 2017 top scrum, whatever you want to go for there. I think it's a fun play, but from my perspective, I've just bought in on some cheap numbered Griezmanns. I feel like that's a great way to go about it. The Monday Chromo, I'm not as sure on. Monday Chromos are pretty plentiful. And I don't know how much demand there's going to be for Antoine Griezmann rookies. So I do feel like maybe numbered or you know higher end stuff could be a better way to go. Next is Lewandowski. This is a pick because essentially no one's prospecting on Lewandowski for the World Cup. I mean, he plays for Poland. So you have all the upside of, hey, if he goes out and scores two or three in a game, maybe against Mexico, you know, cross my fingers, then there will be talk about him. People will like to, you know, write it up to something. It's probably going to mean nothing. But at the end of the day, basically no one's accounting for it anyway. So I think it's a good buy. Um, Bundesliga legend, um, also best of an era in terms of like a Neymar-esque figure. When you look back on this era, you'll think of Lewandowski. Um, I put bad TikTok dancer as kind of a joke, but I mean, he's one of those people that like doesn't have a massive personality. So again, like a lot of Bayern guys, you just get lumped into this team rather than being an individual star, which is sort of what's happened with many of them. I do feel like him leaving Bayern is kind of a bad thing because realistically he was going to become the, you know, Bundesliga all-time top scorer. And to leave before doing that, I, I do feel like hurts him long-term. I actually think Jared Muller could be a better buy now because he doesn't have that risk of being overtaken, uh, at least for a little while longer, for sure. If you do want to get into Lewandowski, though, he has 2008 Extra Klasse um, rookies. He has two different variations. 
This is the less rare version, and he also has alternatives that you could go for, 2016 Prism, second year stuff, high-end autos, 2017 Top Scrum, whatever you want to do in that regard. I do think, great player, Bayern, Bundesliga legend. Could he pop off in the World Cup? For sure. I mean, he's going to be carrying that team, so you never know. He's one of those examples where it has upside short-term, has upside long-term, so I, I think it's an opportunity for someone. And next up, we're going to go with just the two goats because I need to say it. I need to say that these guys are a buy because they are. I know it often just gets pushed under the under the rug and people don't care. They're like, ah, it's a given. But no, if you're going to be buying players for the World Cup, what better players to buy than Ronaldo and Messi? So Ronaldo, goat, potential World Cup. He's already won a Euro, could win a World Cup if he does. Obviously, his stuff would go bonkers, and even if he doesn't win a World Cup, he's still probably top four all-time in everyone's book, which means you have the upside of this World Cup, and you have the long-term, basically locked-in guarantee as long as he doesn't go on a on a spree of you know endless atrocities. I, I think that he's fine. Um, the only downside I could think of is his club situation's up in the air. He's trying to get on a Champions League team somewhere. Little bit of a question mark there, but realistically doesn't matter to his long-term you know view in the hobby. For his rookies, you have the 2002 Mega Cracks football a little card there and a sticker as well. You can choose whatever you want to go for. Um, the sticker does have some fake sort of speculation. Well, actually, I mean, there are tons of fakes out there, to be fair. But mostly in BGS slabs, um, also some other, you know, SGC, CSG type things. Um, and I wouldn't buy them raw. So <laughs> PSA slab on the sticker would be the way I'd go with it. Um, alternatives, you could go with Prism, Chrome, High End, Second Year. Again, all the same things. Whatever you want to do. You could also go like Mega Cracks inserts. There's tons of different Ronaldo items. You could go 2004, 2006 items for his Euro or World Cup. Really tons of different stuff with Ronaldo. And there's going to be people collecting everything Ronaldo related. So it doesn't necessarily matter as much where you go it's going to be more based off what you like what you see opportunity in up to you but Ronaldo you should be buying all the time in my opinion and then same thing goes with Messi go potential world cup the only thing I could think of is a lack of social presence he doesn't have the social media stardom that a Ronaldo does but in my opinion he is the best of all time so I don't think it matters at all but eh, to say it doesn't matter at all that's not fair if he was a Ronaldo type figure on social media it would matter um but his rookies, he has a lot of 2004 releases, so I put my three favorites up on screen now in order. Uh, Mega Cracks, SJ Sticker, and the Foil Monday Chromo. All for different reasons in terms of why they're up there, but that's what I prefer. Whatever you want to do. There are other options. Take a peek into them. But yeah, ton of fun. Um, alternative, same thing as most others. Again, though, I cannot reiterate it enough. People are so excited to go out and spend money on prospects that if they do nothing, this World Cup will be worth significantly less next year, next few months, you know, definitely 4, 10, 15 years down the line. Messi's are always going to be doing good in the sense of if the card market, if soccer cards continue to do well, Messi's have to, right? I know there's this talk of there's a lot of Messi's out there. There's so many. There's not, right? There's not relative to what most people are used to, right? I mean, we, we talk about this type of stuff all the time, but with soccer cards, it's on an insanely different scale. So to soccer card collectors, it seems like there's a ton. When in reality, there's not at all. You have to be buying Messi. You have to be buying Ronaldo. And if you want to buy some other guys I mentioned in this video, I think that that's a great play too. But the most important one that everyone should be investing in, no matter, no matter your take on the market, is the one and true goat that is Ricardo Pepe. So that's that's who we need. That's who we've got to be buying. If you don't have tons of Ricardo Pepe in your case, in your collection, I don't know what you're doing. In my opinion, the USMNT goat, um, potential four-time World Cup winner in the future, long career ahead of him. You never really know. He did score a lot in the MLS. I know the Bundesliga hasn't gone great, but I mean, man, those MLS goals, no one else could do that other than maybe Jesus Ferreira the next year. Any 2020 releases are a definite buy. I'd pay five to 10 X over comps. And as far as his alternatives, anything with the rookie card logo on it is a great buy because it has the RC logo. So people will have to buy it. That's how it works. You heard it here first. Ricardo Pepe, clean eBay, easy money. So that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I went a little long probably for, you know, talking about what are players that shouldn't need that much convincing to be a good buy but i enjoyed it and hopefully you guys did too if you did make sure to leave a like anything you want to tell me would love to see in a comment down below and if you want some more videos like this as soon as you go live make sure to subscribe but with that said hopefully you have a wonderful day and uh peace